carbon plus oxygen forming carbon dioxide hydrogen and oxygen forming a water molecule copper and sulfur used to make copper sulfate hmm but all these are compounds right what about the elements that form these wait a second let me show you something fun oh so many elements just imagine the number of compounds they can make today we will embark on an exciting journey of learning more about these elements so let's get started the periodic classification of elements for centuries scientists have tried to figure out what makes the world around us ancient greeks believed that there were four basic elements that everything was made up of earth water air and fire but what they didn't know was that all that they wanted to know about the universe and its composition was right in front of their eyes and the discoveries of these components revolutionized our understanding about the world today today we have discovered 118 elements which fit together neatly in a table like pieces of a puzzle the table that you can see here is probably the single most important and advanced learning aid in the world of chemistry it gives us a summary of the information about the elements in such a way that it permits us to predict the properties and chemical reactions of these elements by looking at the position of an element on the table one can predict the chemical behavior of that element this table is known as the modern periodic table the periodic table is divided into metals on the left non metals on the right and metalloids in between in the modern periodic table the elements are arranged in seven horizontal rows known as periods and 18 vertical columns called groups elements with similar properties belong to the same vertical column for example all the elements of the first group have metallic character which means they react with water to form metal oxides apart from the seven rows there are two additional rows of 14 elements each at the bottom of the periodic table which are called as lanthanide and the actinides but would it surprise you to know that the periodic table as we know it isn't the first table of elements and like you probably never finished your first puzzle the first table was also incomplete there's more even the order of the elements changed from its original structure now let's start our tour of the periodic table and see its evolution over the years to its present form according to dobrenayer's law of triad when three elements having similar properties are arranged in the order of increasing atomic masses the atomic mass of the middle element is equal to the arithmetic mean of the atomic mass of the other two elements now let's look at an example to understand this better he took the triad consisting of lithium sodium and potassium their respective atomic masses are 7 23 and 39 now if you look at the mathematical relationship between the masses of these elements we see that the average of the atomic masses of lithium and potassium is 7 plus 39 upon 2 which is the atomic mass of sodium that is 23 so if you compare the triads with their current position in the periodic table all three elements belong to the same group like i said before the three elements that formed a triad exhibited similar properties in this particular case lithium sodium and potassium are metals secondly all of them react with water to form alkalis and hydrogen gas and lastly they all have a valency of 1 calcium barium is an example of another triad 
These elements also exhibit similar properties. Calcium, strontium and barium are 40, 88 and 137 respectively. If we calculate the arithmetic mean of the atomic mass of the first and the third elements, it will come to 88. Newland's law of octaves. Now according to this law, when elements are arranged in the order of increasing atomic masses, the properties of every eighth element resembles with the properties of the first element, just like the eighth note on a musical scale resembles the first note. As you can see in this table here, he arranged the elements into horizontal rows of seven elements. If you start with lithium, the eighth element after lithium is sodium. So, according to Newland's law of octaves, sodium and lithium possessed similar properties. Similarly, the eighth element after sodium is potassium. The sodium and potassium also showed similar properties. If you look at the present form of the periodic table, you will notice that lithium, sodium and potassium belong to the same family. This reiterates the fact that these three elements possess similar chemical properties. Mendeleev called this table of elements as the periodic system, which is now commonly known as the periodic table. Mendeleev did not stop there. He was also the one to introduce the word periodic with respect to arranging elements, a term we use till today. But everything just didn't fall in place all that easily. There were gaps in the horizontal rows. But the scientist was an optimist. Instead of seeing this as a problem, Mendeleev thought it simply meant that the elements which belonged in the gaps had not yet been discovered. That's the way to go. Not only that, he was also able to work out the atomic mass of the missing elements and predict their properties. For example, he left a gap after aluminium and named the undiscovered elements as Eka aluminium. Eka in Sanskrit means first. So, Eka aluminium means first comes aluminium, then the unknown element. Mendeleev not only named these undiscovered elements but also predicted their chemical properties. He stated that Eka alumina will have atomic mass of 68 and will be a good conductor of electricity, will be malleable and ductile, it will be hard and shiny but the melting point of that element will be very low. He predicted all those characteristics simply by looking at where the gap was and understanding of how elements surrounding it behave. Wow! That was something. And guess what? When the missing element was discovered, it turned out that Mendeleev was right. After a few years of his prediction, a scientist discovered a new element and named it gallium. Gallium is placed after aluminium in the present periodic table. So was the prediction of Mendeleev's regarding Eka aluminium right? Yes, absolutely. Eka aluminium is now officially known as gallium. Its atomic mass is nearly 70. It's a good conductor of electricity. It is solid at room temperature with an extremely low melting point. Similarly, he predicted properties of all the elements that were missing in his periodic table. After numerous efforts, Mendeleev successfully formulated a proper periodic table which was published in a German journal in 1872. It looked way different from its earlier version. The periodic table has seven horizontal rows called periods and eight vertical columns called groups. The general formula of the oxides and hydrides of elements in every group are written at the top of the group, 
just to indicate that the elements in that particular group have similar chemical properties. The groups are numbered from 1 to 8 and except for group 8, each group is divided into subgroups A and B. The elements which lie on the left hand side called as the subgroup A are called representative elements whereas the elements which lie on the right hand side called the subgroup B are called transition elements. Group 8 contains 9 transition elements in 3 sets which lie in the 4th, 5th and 6th periods. Tutamate for more amazing video lectures. Download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.